What would the first sign of a methylcobalamin deficiency look like? That's a B12 deficiency. You know, it's kind of important since it controls your DNA, your red blood cells, your myelin sheath that surrounds the nerves, like kind of like this cord, right? If I were to take off the insulation of this cord and touch it with another piece of metal, it would short circuit and you can get electrocuted. So myelin is the surroundings of your nerves to protect them. And when that goes, you start getting all sorts of tingling and numbness and burning and things like that. And B12 uh, does have a lot to do with supporting your spinal column, your brain, and, you know, if you're deficient, it could end up with a bit of permanent damage and cause you to be in chronic pain because of the nerve damage, as well as depression and even muscle wasting. But other than that, well, there's a couple more side effects. Blurry vision, tinnitus, anemia, mouth ulcers, sore throat, and hair loss. On the flip side challenge with this deficiency of methylcobalamin is a toxicity. So in other words, you can have symptoms from having not enough and symptoms from having too much. And I'm going to put this research down below. But as far as toxicity from B12, that's usually going to happen if you're taking the synthetic version, not the methylcobalamin, but the cyanocobalamin. I mean, cyano, what is that? That's cyanide. That combines with the um, cobalt and it makes this very complex vitamin. And that has to be converted into the methylcobalamin. And for various reasons I'm going to talk about, it can build up in the body and cause acne, palpitations, anxiety, red skin on your face, like red cheeks, headaches, insomnia. And also another condition called akathisia, where the person is so restless that they just can't sit still. They have intense agitation and sometimes to the point of feeling suicidal, right? From a B12 toxicity. You might say, well, how would I get that? Well, take a look at the back of some of these energy drinks or these uh, one-a-days or even some of the supplements or fortified foods. They really jack up that B12 to like between 8,000 to 14,000% of the RDAs. B12 should only be given in micrograms, not like massive, massive amounts, unless it's in a natural form called the methylcobalamin form. So for that reason, I don't recommend doing the inexpensive synthetic cyanocobalamin. Now, what would be the first sign that you would feel initially if you started becoming deficient in B12? Well, that symptom is, are you ready for this? Asymptomatic. There is no symptom. And what I mean by that is like, it takes a long time for you to feel the effects of a B12 deficiency as it's brewing in the oven, the damage is being created, but you don't necessarily feel it because it's deep into the nervous system. However, uh, one of the first symptoms that you would feel would be extreme fatigue. Now, how does one become deficient in B12? It could be because of your diet, because you don't eat animal products. There is no B12 in plants, okay? It's in animal products or bacteria that can create B12. So if someone's plant-based or vegan, they can develop a B12 deficiency unless they take B12. But the more likely reason why someone's deficient, especially if they're older, is absorption. They don't have good absorption in their digestive system. Either there's something wrong with the stomach, they don't have hydrochloric acid, because think about it, animal products have B12, right? So when you digest meat, you have to break down that protein. If you don't have enough hydrochloric acid, you can't break down the protein to dislodge that B12 vitamin. So it's all locked up in the protein. So you never pull it out. So hydrochloric acid is a very important thing to help you get B12. And so many people have a loss of stomach acid or their stomach acid is not strong. The way that someone should identify as an indicator they need more acid is if they have gas, indigestion, acid reflux, GERD. If this is surprising to you, you should watch the video I have on that topic after we're done with this video, and I'll, I'll put that link down below. But other problems with the stomach too, like um, having part of your stomach removed, maybe gastric bypass, something like that, that can create a B12 deficiency. Or if you have atrophy of the stomach, uh, for some reason, or gastritis, or you have this H. pylori infection, and you have this ulcer because you're going through stress, or you're deficient in zinc. So there's a lot of different things that can go wrong with the stomach. 
or the small intestine or the large intestine. So if you have inflammation in your intestines, it could be from any condition, that can be why you're deficient in B12. Also, if you take aspirin, that can create a B12 deficiency. If you drink alcohol, that can create it. If you eat junk food, that can create it. If you're on antibiotics or you're on some antacid or a PPI, that can create a B12 deficiency. Or even if you're on birth control pills, that's also been known to create a B12 deficiency. If a woman is pregnant or lactating, the need for that B12 goes up. So it's very, very important for a woman who's either pregnant or lactating to eat super healthy. If a person is low on folate, they can have almost identical symptoms to a B12 deficiency because folate and B12 work together. Now, the another interesting thing about uh, this is that if you're a smoker, right, you're breathing in cyanide, okay? And if you're taking cyanocobalamin, a synthetic uh, B12, the cyanide version has to be dislodged and has to convert over. Well, the cyanide from the smoking can lock back up that vitamin and you'll become deficient in B12 because you're a smoker. Another reason why you should quit. But there's one more reason why people are deficient that is very important to know about, and that's a genetic reason. And the term for that is called polymorphism, which I'm not going to get too much into that. All you need to know, it's related to your genes. And the name of that gene is called MTHFR, okay? That's a gene. And if you have a problem with that gene, you're going to have a problem with uh, the enzyme that it produces in relationship to being able to use or convert this B12 and folate. So you're going to have problems with the synthetic version of both of these nutrients. Okay, so folic acid would be the synthetic uh, version usually. And it's mostly in like enriched and fortified foods and synthetic vitamins. If you have this genetic issue, you better avoid folic acid. You need the folate version and it's called methylfolate, right? And you also need the methylcobalamin, not the cyanocobalamin, or you can have a lot of problems um, relating to homocysteine building up, increasing risk of heart problems, stroke, depression, or anxiety from that. And another symptom would be you just can't detoxify. So if you just have a little toxicity in your diet, boy, it just really affects you in a bad way. And I have a video on that too, and I will put that link down below because it's an easy fix if you have this problem. Now, because of the censoring and the suppressing of the algorithms on YouTube, it's becoming more difficult to find my content. And there's a lot of content that I cannot put on YouTube, unfortunately. So to make sure you have full access of all my information, go to drberg.com and subscribe to my newsletter by clicking the link down below in the description. I will see you on the other side.